No, let's 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 fob this off. So this is courtesy of uh Brian Callen. I think he appeared on a podcast and you know, as I mentioned prior, um he's another comedian in the LA comedy scene that was cancelled um uh vis a vis some really pretty serious allegations, right, of sexual assault, right? Um I think in total it was three or four women, I'm not too sure the number, but one of them uh, accused him of rape, the others accused him of some sort of sexual assault. Um they were very they were very detailed accounts that were provided by the other times. Whether or not you believe them or not is one or the other, but there was a lot of things in those stories that you can kind of, if you're a fan of T-Fat K, especially the original fight on the kid with Brian and Brendan Shaw, then you would know that a lot of the stuff that was said by some of the women kind of sounded like stuff that Brian would say. And it kind of made, it kind of sounded a bit, it kind of sounded a bit believable. And the fact that a lot of these, again, it's not a real good example because everyone abandoned Chris Lee, even though I don't think he's guilty of the crimes he's been accused of but the fact that brian essentially got kicked off his own podcast and was left in the wilderness joe rogan hasn't uttered his name i think maybe once he's uttered his name he's not spoken about the issue not had him on his podcast to kind of clear his name whatsoever um maybe lend some credence to there is some validity in the allegations themselves um i again was pretty outspoken in my fact that i didn't really like how kind of brian responded and de and dealt with the allegations i think even going going on this sort of full frontal attack and calling it cancel culture was is ridiculous you're being accused of a crime it's not cancel culture people are accusing you of a pretty serious allegation here um you should deal with it in a serious manner um then he got to in a position then he got to a position where he started um he sued one of the husband one of the the cutest husbands because of she was you know because of slander and obviously the guy was going over the top he was calling all the comedy clubs that brian was supposedly meant to perform at and basically reminding them of the allegations in the hopes that they'd cancel his shows so so obviously taking you know, money out of his pocket, blah, 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 blah. And like I said previously, I'm not a fan of counterculture because generally um, the corporations and the platforms themselves try and cancel you. And I think the cancellation should always come from the customers and also come from the fans. If they decide that after reading all the information regarding your allegations that they want you to be gone, then you're gone. But it's not up to these corporations to do so. But again, I still wasn't a fan of Brian Callen's approach. I thought it was a bit um, tasteless. Um, it lacked in, you know, he didn't really take the allegations seriously, which kind of, again, considering the climate we're in, and if he wants to get a career again, you just have to kind of lend some, you know, you kind of have to deal with them in some sort of serious manner because if you don't, no one's ever going to listen to your, no one's ever going to give you a chance to, you know, get back uh your position or you welcome back into industry now i still think in general brian's hollywood career is done he just about managed to get one off the back of the success of the podcast and being around the early comedy scene it was a long time coming he finally was able to secure you know um the the sitcom that he was in the goldbergs and he had his spin-off as well show that he was doing for a bit and obviously the cameo a short short cameo having a joker was a really good way to kind of cement the fact that he'd finally been accepted um as a, a serious actor in hollywood something that he was obviously wanted to do something that he was his main passion more so than maybe comedy even though he's really good at stand-up comedy and he already said the podcast that seriously blah, blah 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 but i just think the way that it transpired the fact that you know the allegations were really serious he didn't deal with them in the right way i just don't think there's ever going to be an option for him to come back and i think you know by and large maybe this is just his way of maybe not accepting the reality but again like i said i think the reality is his career as he knows it is pretty much over he basically has to just you know at the moment he's relegated to doing a podcast behind a paywall on patreon he finally now came out of the wilderness and does one with steve bright steve burns steve burns yeah, who seems like a bit of a cool dude but the podcast so far I, i've heard from it sucks ass um it's not the same thing as brendan i was doing a show with brendan over the fire and the kid even though brendan's a goof they have a really good um chemistry bloody blah, blah 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 he went on a podcast recently and explained the reason why he left let's watch what he has to say I've been a big fan for a long time, and we've listened to Fighter and the Kid. Big inspiration for us. You Thank guys you. are like like the most honest uh, podcast we've heard out there. And I was Try just me. like, what? yeah, and, and I just want you to go through this and like what happened and, you know, what, what that looks like now. Uh, what, you mean Fighter and the Kid? Yeah, yeah. Fighter and the Kid. We literally, we literally used to, when we started the show five years ago, Fighter and the Kid was one of our inspiration. It's the, yeah. the, the chemistry yeah. and the, the banter and the way you guys put well, it together. Well, what was so hard is like, so Brennan and I are still very close. Mm -hmm. We talk every day. And yeah, but that's the thing that you talk every day, but you're not on the show, are you? That is the issue. 
that must sting a bit, isn't it? Even though Brian Brenda did good by him, and supposedly, according to him, he breaks him off some money um, from the podcast, and still, you know, sends him that. Even though you know Brian is allegedly uh, the son of a very wealthy banker, so he's not going to be hurting for money regardless. But still, you know, paying whatever alimony support he has now, finalizing a divorce, living in Europe in LA, it's not cheap. So the fact that Brendan is helping him out is still great, but still, the inability to go on his own show that he created with Brendan to clear his name, to put money in, you know, to keep himself in, you know, in the public consciousness is must be really disappointing. And basically it's their own fault. The fact that they signed up with Cast Media, you know, got a paycheck, took some weight off their shoulders, but then essentially what it led to was them having bosses who were basically able to say, hey, he can't be on here because of sponsors, which is, you know, essentially um, it goes against everything they did when they kind of built the show up. But hey, what could you do? Let's continue. What was so hard was when you get when you get canceled, when you get when somebody just makes up <clears throat> lies about you, you can't do anything about it anymore. And you have to just, you know, I, I went on the offensive. And I was never going to be quiet about it because it's just it, it was just insane. So um, I went on the offensive. And I said, I'm not going away like everybody else. Fuck this because I know who I am and so does everybody else I know. And and so, but what happened? The irony is, though, when the allegations came up about Chris D'Elia, he kind of went away and didn't really back up his friend immediately. Do you remember the whole sobbing, Brendan Shaw, I can't talk, um, Brent, Brian basically is saying they weren't really good friends. They didn't hang out with each other much. They only hanged out when they went on tour and they didn't tour as much as everyone thinks they toured. He doesn't know him that well. Bloody, he made every excuse under the book to kind of save his career. And the moment his career was in jeopardy, he went to go on the offensive. Where was that courage and that um, wherewithal and that determination there for your supposed not friend? What happens is in, with cancel culture, corporations, your sponsors go, we can't, Right mm. now, we just don't want to. We're we're afraid. Yeah, because it was you had an allegation, right? Yeah, it, right. It, there was no evidence, no nothing. Just no, someone said years something. Old. That's twenty-one it. years old. Uh, yeah, like yeah. twenty-one years ago, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what was the first thing that happened when you? How did you know? Oh shit! This I is think it was like uh, like eight hours before that. My lawyer called me and said, "There's a, there's they're writing a story, and and you know you just hear that they're all you hear is that there are allegations. And when I read them, I went, "You're this is stuff I they said I said." Hmm. You got to remember that that the 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 these two women said I said something. It wasn't even a nothing physical. It was what I said. And then a woman from 1999 had an, an allegation, hmm. and and I was like, and the first thing I said, I went, who? I go, that's not possible. It made no sense. But you don't know the the detailed story they're going to tell. You don't know any of that. You you if you if that was the case, I could have mounted an attack. I could have been like, this is fucking crazy mm -hmm. but all you can do when somebody does that and you have an activist who's a journalist because these people are activists they're not journalists right all you can do and they know who you are they you you're the enemy i speak too much mm -hmm. i talk too much mm -hmm. and and then people know my politics i'm not even you know you can't even call me right wing i'm just a guy who believes in freedom and individual responsibility and those things i'm fucking socially liberal as fuck mm -hmm. you know i you know um but it doesn't matter you're you're i was lumped in with a group of people who were considered uh, problematic. Uh, that's what happens. And I was told that. Mm. I was told to shut up by people. Were you told that beforehand? Yes. Wow. wow. Yes, because I would voice, my, I was told by some pretty smart, intelligent, powerful people. From the stuff that you would talk about on Fire Sure, and on yeah. Rogan and stuff like that. And I was like, and I was like, really? fuck off. You know, I got nothing, I'm, I'm got nothing to hide. I've been a good guy. But he lost his entire career. I think that advice was pretty permanent. He probably should have taken that advice, isn't it? And again, this is probably him just saying the wrong things, um, get, not getting his facts straight. It was not probably for his own strong opinions because, you know, if you're familiar with the podcast, Brian's opinions aren't that strong. He kind of, you know, moves with the wind. Um, but let's just remind ourselves of the allegations, right? Because he's trying to make it seem as if these were just kind of superfluous allegations that were basically put out there to kind of muddy his name. But they were pretty serious from my recollections. This is courtesy of Variety. Let's see if we can get this up on you on the page. Come on, load, 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 load. Is it going to load? Is it going to load? Is it going to load? Come on. Bear with me one sec. Let's make it loads it loading. Come on, get up. There we go. So this is Cursive Variety, right? This is from 
July the 31st last year. Uh, Brian Kerstin, a comedian, has been accused of sexual assault and misconduct by four women, right? In a report from the Los Angeles Times. Challenges led to a kidnapped, sorry, not kidnapped, Taylor Beck has led to a raped Catherine Fiore Tigerman, an actor and comedian whose credits include the wedding band, blah, blah, blah. Another woman, Rachel Green, alleges that Callan tried to force himself on a during an encounter which took place in American Apparel in 2009. So him saying it was a 21-year-old allegation, cool, but still it's rape, so it's a serious one. The second one is somebody al al alleging that he got a bit handsy when he was trying on some clothes in American Apparel in 2009. If you read the account, it sounds like something Brian Callan would do, trying on trousers, coming out in underpants, waving around, pin he supposedly pinned her up, allegedly pinned her up against a wall and tried to shove his tongue down her throat and she ran away and told one of her colleagues and then he left the store, right? It sounds like something that you would imagine. I'm sure there's more to the story. Maybe the lady herself was flirting back with him and he kind of read the signals wrong, blah, 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 blah. But those two allegations are pretty serious they're not like somebody saying you were somebody saying that on a you know film set you said something really rude and you insulted their religion or you said something misogynistic no these are people who said you physically did something to them in close quarters that they deemed to be untoward that they remember in great detail which they shared with their friends this isn't like again he's saying people said things continue uh the most recent allegation in 2017 when tiffany king comedian previously performed in the same club alleged that she was offered a stage time of course this is the one that you can maybe argue the says thing that the lady tiffany king basically said callan um said that if you if you want stage time she should give him a blowjob who knows if that actually happened and then the other one uh what it says four what's the four okay the fourth is not really listed here i don't know why that is but anyway those are some serious allegations right so this is the so him kind of painting it as like people just saying he said stuff is really bizarre and again, it's a real mismanagement of the situation. He really fucked himself over in this regard. I think he should have listened to his friends who told him to shut up because in, in, instead he got himself in more trouble than he probably needed to get himself into. But let's continue and hear what he has to say. I, my whole life? Yeah. Well, get, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, whatever the case, we can trace that back to, you know, Chris and I had a, Chris Lee and I had a show on Netflix. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you get lumped in with all this stuff. Mm -hmm. What happens is my podcast after seven years that I built, seven years, they go, the sponsors go, we, we can't, the, your agent calls you and says, this, nobody, nobody will sponsor right wow, now. Wow, like and that. And so my, my, my fucking brother. Like all of them? All of them. My brother, because everybody's got dirt. Everybody, everybody's terrified. Well, let, I'll explain what it is. It's like McCarthyism. But my yeah. brother, my brother, who I built a podcast for seven years, we had to walk away. I, I had to, to protect him, I had to get away because otherwise his sponsors would jump. Yeah. And again, rewrite history, that's not true. When the allegations first came about, they tried to get back on. He, he said he's going to explain everything on a Saturday podcast or something. Remember the weekend thing? He put out a crappy statement talking about cancel culture. Again, shoot himself in the foot. Um, and then I guess in between the time that they recorded and put out that show and announced he's going to do a Saturday tell-all, somebody who in cast media reached out and said, that's not happening. The sponsors are all pulling away. You're not going to make any money in this podcast anymore. And again, it's their fault for signing up with cast media because that maybe alleviated some of the administrative and, you know, marketing and brand and sales and advertising things that they were basically doing on their own and outsourced it to cast to kind of have a whole bevy of podcasts that they sponsor. They, they, I think, they um were formerly actually impulsive fired him recently right um logan paul's podcast but they've got everybody from like the portal to um to the fire and the kid and then when when obviously that saturday podcast got scrapped um they then tried to do another show because you know but brian Cameron basically not permitted to go back on the fire and the kid called um the fire in the ring so I had to rebrand it and doing the same studio uh, cast media again told them nope you can't do that and then after the fact is when they decided to launch a patreon and do a show behind a paywall and that couldn't happen because brendan wasn't allowed to do that show because he's contracted with cast under fire and a kid and he can't do another show with somebody that has those allegations over his head so he's kind of framing it like he did this noble act of my friend you keep money on your table and food in your plate that's i'm gonna no. he tried to ha hastily reply to some serious allegations in a really flippant way on the podcast that he should have dealt with in you know in the serious nature that they've kind of been alleged to especially when they've been put in a you know uh ragtag uh, 
magazine, what, newspaper like the Los Angeles Times with somebody that, you know, I think it's that Amy Kaufman lady at that time was basically making it a mission to expose and, you know, um, shine a light on some of the assaulters and sexual abusers within the LA comedy scene. It was a really treacherous moment. He should have dealt with the allegations seriously, but he didn't. He tried to get, he tried to kind of um, steamroll his way through. He thought he was probably more famous than what he was. And the fans would rally around him, which they did in some respects with Patreon. They probably earned a good living from there. But overall, you know, his career has suffered greatly from it. And again, this is somebody who, for the most part, again, being a fan, it seemed like his main love and his main drive was for him to be an actor that's what he came to hollywood for he was kind of you know told he'll be the next tom hacks right which obviously he didn't necessarily go on to fulfill but his main love has always been to be involved in acting he wanted to be in hollywood he wanted to be one of those people that go to these premieres and are casting these shows and casting these tv series and have a sitcom the fact that he was super talented and great at stand-up comedy and was really funny on podcasts was just like an extra but his actual main love was hollywood and the moment that got taken away from him i guess he was just scrambling and wanting to stay afloat and keep himself relevant he just did all these crazy shits and reacted to it really wrongly and again blamed on cancel culture which he then had to retract and look at him now he's on the podcast with you know these guys who i don't even know who their names are and he's trying to explain himself and make it make sense and rewrite history again making it sound worse than what it was or ma making it worse actually than than it is at the moment wow and so that's what fucking happens and what happens is listen if you can come after somebody after 21 fucking years where you're like what yeah what what do you, what do, you do with that you, everybody and, and, it's a ver every and it's a verbal thing i thought it was actually well a no no For the, the, the 21 years ago was a was a was an allegation of physical uh, you know, assault but but oh, i mean up. again what you think i was walking around like doo -doo 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 -doo. like uh, uh, what, what do you think i got away with something you think i'm a, a, a psycho right. was i wearing a stocking over my head what are you <laughs> out of your fucking mind yeah you, there's no way to defend yourself against this insanity so there is and it's not the way you did it you're guilty what? until, I mean, it's, it's yeah, like guilty every, until proven innocent. every right? guy that you know who's a comic or every, every, every powerful man in Hollywood, mm. everybody is, including a lot of women who have husbands and sons and brothers, everybody goes, they're terrified. Mm -hmm. If they can come after me, they can come after anybody. Mm -hmm. They just can. And that's, that's, a, that's a terrifying place to be because every guy goes like this. They go, oh, I dated a crazy, uh, that was a girl, a crazy girl in college. I wonder if she's going to, you know. She just say something. Right. Dude. 21 years later wow so are you kidding me so, so this 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 is what this is when allegations become weaponized yeah. and and don't kid yourself it all goes away and don't kid yourself it's about murdering you there it's it, you, this is about murder this is about when you talk about canceling people it's a it's it's what it really means is we want to make sure you never work again and you're on the street and you can't feed your children you can't pay your mortgage it's nothing other than that it's nothing less than total and an absolute devastation hmm. don't tell me about you know if you're a real scumbag if you're a Harvey Weinstein or a Bill Cosby yeah man i get it i get it the, the evidence is too overwhelming fuck off get out of here go to jail mm -hmm. Otherwise, though, you 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 know, if people are getting canceled over a tweet, I'm talking about a tweet. Read the madness of crowds. A tweet, you you somebody put, and they, it was like I I I didn't think about it. I was fat shaming someone, but I didn't realize it. And you got to save your career sometimes. Mm -hmm. This is a very dangerous. Time. Now, did you did you did you have ownership in the show? And did you how did you yes. do, did you have to did you have to yeah. sell it or just no, no, bounce? No, no, no. I mean, I still I'm still you know I'm mm -hmm. still in it, but but it's it's. Uh, it's it's something that I worry about for my children. I worry about for everyone. Uh, this is this is something that, and I think a lot of people are worried about it. And I think most people can't stand this cancel culture shit. Yeah, I mean, I, that's all I hear. Again, I don't think it's cancel culture, man. I think he's really obfuscating, obs, 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 obsificating, whatever it may be called. He's rewriting the narrative uh, to make it make sense for him. And obviously he has to, to save his career, but it's not cancel culture. He was accused of something. He had plenty of time and opportunity to explain his side of the story and deal with it with the severity that that allegation probably deserved. Um and kind of, you know, find a way to uh, reintroduce himself back into the public conversation without it kind of coming across like he's 
again he's making it seem as if like he said something racy in a tweet or something it wasn't necessarily that again I've, like i said previously my stance on cancer culture is i'm not a fan of it i don't like corporations deciding that when you can and cannot feed your family i think that should be down to the fans um if they deem you to be surplus of requirements if they're not a fan of your work if they think you don't represent what they're into they should be the ones ultimately that decide whether or not you have a career it shouldn't be up to these corporations whatsoever but still you can't just openly disregard these allegations and try and carry on your normal everyday life with this hanging of your head and think it's going to work it's not and eventually essentially anyway his entire career has been taken away from him probably never to be restored in any sort of meaningful way which is maybe the greatest uh punishment he could serve for it if he is guilty if he's innocent still i think he kind of um show himself in the foot but not give himself the ample opportunity to kind of say his piece um in a clear and legible manner but again what do I know?